here we have another algorithm question. This one is also worth nine marks. So question number 11, all employees who earn more than a certain amount must pay national insurance, which is calculated as a percentage of their earnings. Then we've got a table with different ranges that were allowed and what kind of national insurance contributions people need to pay. A company wants a program to calculate the national insurance contributions of its employees output in ascending order. Write an algorithm to calculate employees' national insurance contributions per month in ascending order. Now the problem with this question that the students did is that they didn't actually specify the final result in ascending order. So let's kick off then declaring our procedure. I've called mine calc ni, so calculating national insurance, and then I've got a range of variables. I've got monthly pay as a real, I've got a threshold as a real, upper earnings as a real, lower rate as an integer, upper rate as an integer, number of employees is an integer, array employees is an array of real values, and then I've got national insurance is real, and a flag is a boolean value. Now just by declaring all of your variables, that will get you one mark. Now these variables are from the exam board mark scheme, and they don't actually use them, and some of them they've not declared as arrays. So I'll adjust that as I go through. This question seemed to be riddled with errors from the exam board. So, the next mark comes from the initialization of the variables. So I set my threshold to 671. I'll set my upper earnings to 3,583. I'll set my lower rate to 12, which would be 12%, and set my upper rate, which is 2%. And all those initializations come from the table in the question. I'm just going to assign those values to variables. You may not have done that. It's perfectly fine. No issues with that at all. The next step now, I'm going to output a message to ask the user to enter the number of employees. And then I'll ask them for an input. And I'll store that in my no employees variable. Using this value, then I can iterate through the number of employees to see which national insurance contribution that they are required to pay. And each one of these will be a selection statement. And here is an example of where the exam board try to confuse us in the mark scheme. Monthly pay should actually be an array, so I need to change that. So monthly pay at the position of I, if that's less than the threshold, which is £671, then the national insurance is going to equal zero. And then we discover that national insurance should also be an array. Because we're storing this all at the position of I, the national insurance and the monthly pay will all be stored in the same position, but in different arrays. The next check is checking if the monthly pay at the position of I is greater than the threshold and the monthly pay at position of I is less than or equal to the upper earnings, then the national insurance at the position of I should equal the monthly pay minus the threshold, because it's the earnings over £672, multiplied by the lower rate of 12%. And that is all stored in the national insurance array at the position of I. And finally, for the third condition, if the monthly pay at the position of I is greater than the upper earnings of £3,583, then the national insurance at the position of I is equal to the upper earnings minus the threshold multiplied by the lower rate of 2% plus the monthly pay at the position of I minus the upper earnings multiplied by the upper rate. And that's because in the question it said anybody earning over £3,583 
2% of the earnings over £3,583 plus 12% of £3,583. That's what National Insurance they pay. Each one of those if statements will get you one mark. And the only task left is now to sort my array into ascending order. Now, when I looked at the mark scheme from the exam board, there was a few mistakes in there already. And it's not made clear on the mark scheme that the question says, write an algorithm to calculate the employee's national insurance contributions per month in ascending order. So once we've calculated the national insurance contributions, surely that would have been the national insurance array that I need to put into ascending order. But again, in the exam board's wisdom, they have used their monthly pay array. So I gave credit in both instances as long as you got the algorithm in ascending order. Using a standard bubble sort would have sufficed. So let's have a look at what that looks like. First, I set my flag variable to false because it's a Boolean. And then I created a for loop. I'm gonna loop through or iterate through all of the employees that have been added so far. Then I'm gonna check if my monthly pay at position I is less than monthly pay at position I plus one. Then I'm going to make a swap. Now after reviewing this video, the less than symbol should actually be swapped if you want to do it in ascending order. What this is saying is if monthly pay at the position of I, which is the first position, is less than or equal to monthly pay I plus one, which is the one next to it, then make a swap. We don't want to actually do that. We want to keep the lowest values on the left hand side and the greater values on the right hand side. After I've sorted that out, what I'll do is I will copy in the monthly pay at the position of I plus one into a temporary variable. Then monthly pay at I plus one is now given the value of monthly pay. So I've got duplicate values in my array. Then I put the temp back in monthly pay at position of I, and then I set the flag to true because I've made a swap there. Once I've done all my swaps, which is controlled by the outer loop, I end the if, I end the for, and then I will break out the loop if there are no swaps made on a pass. And then hopefully my order would be correct. There's three marks on offer, one for the outer loop, one for the inner loop, and one for the swaps themselves. Total for this question was nine marks.